We got Vince on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure right now. Uh, he's going to be our first Skype guest in the history of this show. I'm such a huge uh, fan. And uh, obviously, you know him from a, a lot of stuff. Uh, his, you know, his most uh, famous role, Johnny Sack on The Sopranos. But he's done, he's been in movies, Patriot's Day, Blacklist, Blue Bloods, Killing Them Softly, the show Good Wife, Person of Interest, many Law and Order uh, episodes, Monk. He's also a jazz guitarist. Jesus, he's a real Renaissance man, Vince, huh? And uh, performs in and around Manhattan. You know why he performs locally? Which we already have something in common, not that I'm a, he doesn't fly. I don't fly either. I was born with legs and uh, two shitty shoulders. Please welcome to the show the, the great Vince Caratola. Hi, Nick. How are you? Vince, look at you. You look... You, look at me. You, you, Skype makes everybody look like they're 106. You notice? <laughs> I, <laughs> You're giving me a compliment now. <laughs> we both look like we're in the waiting room. It's some fucking hospital. <laughs> God's like the, waiting room, yeah. God's waiting room. Yes, Miami is what we're talking Miami. about. Miami. Let me, Vince, I'll tell you, it really is. It's a pleasure to have you on. We, uh, I, I, last time I saw you was Comia show. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't, I couldn't believe how funny you were. I didn't, uh, <laughs> I, you know, it must be that New Jersey, uh, Guinea. In yeah, you. it's New Jersey water. I'm going to show I have a well. I got a well, too. <laughs> what? I got a well, too. Good. I, it's, I hear you. It's gross. Um, it's, oh. we're going to show, we're going to show, look, I know you're probably sick of talking about the Sopranos, but this show is very Sopranos oriented. And, uh, I got you. And, uh, we're going to show one of my favorite clips of you. This is the scene <laughs> when Johnny Sack's wife get insulted by Ralph Cifaretto. He goes to have a sit down with Carmine because he wants a. You still got him? Okay, I can't see him. Uh, this is when he has a sit down and uh, he's defending his wife's honor because Ralph Cifaretto made a joke about his wife and he wants mm. R R Ralph Whack. Let's take a look at that clip if we can. She was having a 90 pound mole removed from her ass. The implication was that her ass is so big she could have a mole that size removed from it. It's an off-colored remark. It was highly inappropriate. It's the funniest thing. You want? I'll demand these texts. <laughs> but clip them? No. Is, is it all just about money? I'll crack them good. I'll ask for 200 grand. 200 grand for insulting my wife? What's next, Carmine? You get the fuck up for a million? He wants the fucker? I'm making a point. I'm talking about my wife's honor here. My honor. <laughs> Vince, you don't know how many times I've used that line, whether it's my, you know, my friends. You get the fucker for a million? <laughs> Who? Vince, let me... Ask. That was a lot. That was a lot. A million was a lot, Nick. Yeah, that. absolutely. Right? I mean, I mean uh, you know, that's yeah. Sophia Loren. <laughs> Let me ask you this. I want you to, real quick, because you've told the story in interviews, uh, because I, I still go on, uh, I mean, uh, I still go on auditions, and you told the story about when you auditioned for this. Yeah. And, and, and what you did differently than the other mm -hmm. actors. Can you, can you tell the people? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I, I didn't want to go to the audition at all, Nick. Yeah. I was working on an NBC uh, movie of the week with Chris Null in Staten Island. And my, this is the third time my agent called and said, you know, you really should go read for this part. Nah. <laughs> I finally went. It was on West 79th Street. Uh, I get out of the cab. I'm late. Smoked a cigarette. Now I'm even more late. Finally, I walk upstairs. There's one woman left in the room. She's behind the desk. She's got like 4,500 8x10s on the desk. She says to me, without looking up, you're late. I said, okay, I'll go home. No problem. Thank you. You know, I'll leave. <laughs> She, she looks up. She says, no, wait, sit down. She said, do you have the sides that they sent you? I said, yeah, I have them. She said, come on, we'll read the scene. So we read the scene. She said, all right, it was a Thursday. She said, I want you to come back Monday at Silver Cup, and I want you to meet some people. So I went back, and uh, that's my callback. So there's about, I don't know how many guys in, in the waiting room, and I know they, they, they were called back for the same part, right. Johnny Sack, which, by the way, was only supposed to be a one-episode character. Anyway, I'm in the waiting room, and I hear these guys saying the same dialogue that I have in my hands, but they're screaming. You know, blah, 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 hash this, Tony, that, Uncle Junior, blah, blah. So I said to myself, okay, I got it. So when I got into the room, it was my time. I sat down. They said, are you ready? I said, yeah. I whispered the entire dialogue. I just whispered it. Because I felt if you have any power, you only have to say something once. 
And you could say it in a very low tone. And I think that was it. So I just went against the, I went against the herd, in other words. It's so funny in that, that you said no to the audition that many times. Is there yeah. any, Vince, is there anything worse than fucking auditioning? No, I think it's, it's, it's diabolical, actually. <laughs> I mean, I think if you go in, they want to see you for something, and they just want to talk to you a little bit, right. see if you have the essence of whatever character it is that you're in for. I, that's fine, because I know how to memorize. I know how to read. It's not a big deal. Right. So in other words, you want me to give it back to you the way it's written on the paper. It doesn't always work. Right. right. So I no, I think that, and then when you get to a certain point, when you're able to say to your agent, or your agent even says to you, Listen, this is not for you. Let them make an offer if they're interested. Otherwise, goodbye and good luck. So lately, it's been happening to me. I'm, I'm appreciative. Of well, I would think so, because Jesus, I mean, Gandolfini, as great as he was, had nothing on you. I watched every episode a hundred times. Oh, and, man, uh, thank God, thank you. Hey, let me, let me ask you this real quick before we move on to politics. Do you remember yeah. you, you and I acted together? Yes. Wait a minute. Hold on. The episode with uh, well, when you were on our show. Not e no, not even on The Sopranos. This was a, this was a live thing. Steve oh Steve Sharippa hosted this thing called Wise Guys. Absolutely, and absolutely. It, and, we, and we did a quick sketch. We wrote it beforehand. You were a comedy That's club right. owner. That's right. It was hysterical. And and I was a comic, and I was bitching that you weren't paying me enough money. And like I, That's right. I was so That's nervous right. working with you. This was at the height of The Sopranos. I was so nervous that I, I went from zero to 100 in the scene. And I'm like, fuck you, but I left you with nothing. I remember it. Yes. Leave it to Stevie. He can conjure up anything. <laughs> that was such a thrill for me. That was in the it was, it was a good night. Yeah, oh, I remember. Oh, my God. Um, so let me ask you this. You grew up in, 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 in Jersey. So yeah. how did you end up becoming, how did you end up Republican in such well, a blue state? When I was growing up, it was all Republican in New Jersey. I grew up in Englewood, New Jersey, which is a gorgeous town. I had a wild paper route, Nick. My block that I lived on, right. I delivered papers to Sarah Vaughn, Dizzy Gillespie, <laughs> Tony Bennett, Jerry Vale, part of the Isley family. Oh, my uh, God. Part of the Wrigley family, believe it or not. So show business kind of like seeped in. Leslie Gore, a lot of people. Andre Previn. And uh, it was a very conservative state at the time. And I'm going back to the 60s, obviously. Right. So um, as far as why am I, re you know, how did I become, I'll, I'll become a, Rep I'll stay Republican if I live to be 2,000 years old. I don't believe in giveaways. I don't believe in, let me take some money out of your pocket so I could give it to some schmo right. who sits around all day in his pajamas and eats Cheerios. Right. No, man, it's not going to happen. I made that money. I'll give you what I think you, you, you need right. or what you prescribe, but let's not go overboard. Because, you know, the mafia knows damn well you never kill the golden goose. Because exactly. then you can't milk him anymore. That's exactly right. You can't milk him anymore. You don't have a client anymore if you destroy this guy financially. That is a great, great point. Do you find in this business, uh, I mean, because you're very famous because of the Sopranos, were you uh, out there with your politics during, during the I mean, it, it, there's no way of knowing. People always ask me this. Well, does it cost you jobs in this business? Because it's a left-wing business, show business. How would we and know? How that? would we know, right? We would never know. Like some producer's going to call you up and say, you know what? I was going to give you a starring role in that movie, <laughs> but you're all the way to the right. So I'm not, I mean, they don't send you a memo. So how would you know? The, the only way I know once is because I, I had an Applebee's commercial they, that – they wanted me for this thing. They wanted me to fly to Atlanta for a day and, right. and, and do a commercial with Chip Carey, who was the announcer for the Braves, and somebody mm -hmm. else for Applebee's, right? And uh, yeah. it's a go. It's a go for, for two days. I think I'm going down there. At the 11th hour, I get a call from my agent. They went online, and they saw me at a roast, uh, Comedy Central roast, you know, saying horrendous shit. Or they heard me on Howard Stern, and they fucking axed me. No, ridiculous. No. See, it works in reverse, doesn't it? It works in reverse because if you, if anyone would have had that stance back in the 60s, 70s, whatever, they would be ostracized for not being patriotic. Would they not? But you know what I believe, and I firmly believe, and I'll say this publicly to any A list Hollywood left wing liberal actor get over yourself. Because you know what? While you're laying out by your pool in Beverly Hills, you don't see any bombs coming over your head, do you? No, because the other side, 
The conservative side says, no, we need a strong defense in the United States of America. Yeah. You have them to thank for your freedom. And those people floating around in their pools in Hollywood have what around their houses? Gates and walls. Oh, yes, Pro and absolutely. Pr protected yeah. by guns. Yeah, uh, protected by guns is right. So, That's correct. So what you're telling me, uh, Vince, is you don't, you, you don't take your political cues from Alyssa Milano? Fuck. <laughs> You know, I think that girl saves a lot of money in publicists every month. But she goes out there and does the stuff herself. I know. You gotta be saving five grand a month, right? I know. And she's, uh, you know, good looking, but dumb as a fucking rock. Sorry. Yeah, well, yeah. What do you think, uh, okay, midterms, uh, do you think all this Kavanaugh shit that went on, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous. Um, it was ridiculous. So yeah, it was. do you think it's going to galvanize, because we keep hearing about this blue wave for the last three months, do you think it's going to galvanize the right and uh, the Republicans are going to hold on to that. What's going to happen in the, in the midterm? You, you know, Nick, I've never seen such a bad of uh, such a such a band of sore losers. Can you imagine if Hillary had won? This would be a very quiet country oh, right now. God. We'd be on our way to being broke. Right. But right. we'd be very quiet. So with regard to the midterms, I think the people who have brains in their heads, and I do believe that that's most Americans, are going to say things are tremendously different than they were under the failure of Obama, right. and that we should continue that line because nobody can complain about their 401ks right now. Nobody right. can complain that they can't find a job. And when you go to that, I started my business 1974. I was whatever, 19. I put a little ad in the paper. I fixed steps. I fixed sidewalks. I fixed retaining walls, and it became something. I went to college, but it bored me. I wanted to be in business. Right. You get a guy with a squeegee. He'll make a you'll make a hundred grand in a year if he works. So these and that's another thing, Nick. You see these guys out, these people that are out ten o'clock on a Sunday night at you know, <laughs> eleven o'clock the, and they're protesting, but they don't have to get up Monday morning. <laughs> I know. Period. I know. There's no way they have to be. They go to the post office, they grab that check or whatever. Done. You know, it used to be called relief back in the days of the depression That's you were right. going to get some relief but this is this is this is a a totally it's a dynasty now of welfare how it's did, generational how, how did how did jersey turn so blue back in the 60s you know i don't you know nick that's a really good question yeah. it began it really did begin uh, locally in towns and counties and i think that well the obvious thing is the more people you come in who are dependent the more votes you're going to have for Democrats, including the people that have been buried under the ground for the last hundred years, they vote too in Democratic. I know Democratic candidates. Did, period. Did, they did, do. This story I just did in Texas. Did you hear what I? I don't know if you were listening. This, uh, this sending out ballots <clears throat> to non-citizens with the yeah. with the box already checked citizen. Yes. You see. You see. I mean, what the now, fuck? You you're against federal law. The other federal law is you're supposed to pay income tax. But that one we're not going to talk about, right? <laughs> Let's just talk about bringing everybody in to vote. You know, do you, do you, do you, do you have a pulse? You, oh, you can vote for me then because right. I'm going to get you an apartment and I'm going to get you I'm going to get you groceries. I'm tired of it. Yeah. You know, my family came here, my, my, fa my father and his four brothers. They had to have been they had to be sponsored by a tradesman in New Jersey. And they all became bricklayers, one a fine furniture maker. You had to have an apprenticeship. Otherwise, we don't want you. You're not coming. Forget it. Right. You had to bring something here, and you didn't. And you didn't bring the flu here. You had to bring something <laughs> good. Here. Okay? I, used to, I used to have a joke about it. You know, it was like a party. We invited everybody, everybody from all over the world to party. I, I, yeah. I, I said the, uh, the, you know, the Polish brought the sausage, uh, the Japanese brought the sound system, and the Mexicans said, "Fuck, we'll clean up afterwards." But uh, I had a, had a whole bit on it. I can't even remember it. Uh, before I let you go, a couple more things. Uh, oh, you. What's uh, the mob violence? I since you're you played a mobster, what do you think of this chasing people out of restaurants and 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 getting up in their face? And I mean, people are literally, you know, literally getting sucker punched for wearing a MAGA hat. I mean, yeah, exactly. At, at, what do you? What's your what's your advice to people on the right? I mean, I always believe fight fire with fire. You can't sit there and take it. But well, what? What's your advice? Well, you know, first of all, the 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 people who are innocent go into a restaurant in D.C. Uh, Cruz and his wife, right. whether you agree with him, you don't agree with him, whatever it is. I, I blame the restaurant, number one. I'm sorry. I you saw you. Have gotten, grabbed a couple of guys. Well, get on the phone. You know why, Nick? Everybody knows somebody. 
Right. So listen, get over here now. <laughs> right. Help me out, okay? Right. They didn't do that, no. which tells me that they were more interested in those those skulls that had $11 in their pocket, if they were lucky, those people. Right. All right. right? Up against a man like him who came in to have a meal, going to pay you three dollars 350, 400, whatever that tab is going to be. Right. 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 It's disgusting. They have, they have this, I said it, they're such sore losers that, well, Soros, Soros got a big checkbook. He keeps paying these people. When they're is, paid. Oh, absolutely. But, but, but the ones that chased uh, Cruz and his wife out of the restaurant weren't paid. They're actually working. They were, they were working for Paul. They were staff members of some politicians, some Democrat. Well, there, there we go. There we go. There we go. But you know something? Those are the cases where prosecution should be imminent. Right. That's harassment. Right. And if you touch somebody, it's battery. That's if right. If it was me, that happened to me. Oh, yeah. I would own every one of this guy's restaurants. It would only take me a week. Trust me, I would do it. <laughs> I know. Uh, we have a uh, real, what, we have a chat room? Does somebody want to ask a question of Vince? Fellas? Yeah, Carl, uh, Carl McCool says, hey, Nick, ask Vincent if he's still selling real estate. His license is... It's hung at my company's Remax in North Bergen. Uh, one of our chat room members wants to know if you're still selling uh, real estate. Ben. No, I had to park my license somewhere. I buy and sell for my own purposes. Ah, he does it for his own purposes. So there you go. The guy has, what, his sign hanging in his office? Yeah. <laughs> the Remax. They should take it on, down yeah. already. The Remax thing. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, real quickly. Uh, I know you're a singer, and I, I should have pulled some clips of that real quick. Uh, let me ask you, as a, uh, you know, a Jersey Gindalone, uh, uh, Sinatra, <laughs> Sinatra or Dean Martin? Who's got the better voice, Vince? Sinatra. Yeah? But the best of all in my book was Elvis Presley. Is that right? Then my book, yeah. Yeah. The you tone, you can't, you can't suppress. You put him ahead of Mike Nesmith of the Monkees? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's close, Nick, but, you know, I got to be fair to Elvis. <laughs> Do you, you have any uh, gigs you want to plug? Because I know you're singing yeah, around I do. Manhattan. Uh, Go ahead. November 2nd, November 2nd, yeah. Friday night, I'm doing two shows at a fabulous jazz club called Maureen's Jazz in Nyack. It'll be my third or fourth show there. It's a very hot jazz club. I'm doing two shows, and uh, I love being there. I just I have a five-piece jazz band, and they're hot. So. Yeah, he's multi-talented. Plays. And you're 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 more than welcome. You and your wife. You let me know if you want to be. I know it's a schlep for you, but I'll, you'll be my guest. Hey, if I'm free, I, I would absolutely love it. You know, me be my that. guest. If they want to know more, they can follow me at, at Vincent Curatola. At Vincent Curatola, and uh, you also have uh, his website, VincentCuratola.com. Just give mm -hmm. me one. Get, just give me one of these. I want you to give me the creeps on this petty pace. I'm sorry. Creeps on the creeps on this petty pace. From the <laughs> the creeps on this petty face. Tomorrow I gotta go into work, and I gotta just deal with that disgusting <laughs> idiot fucking pack sucker. Okay, Tony. Bingo. Vince, I, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Uh, you're a talented, uh, funny, intelligent guy, Nick. God bless you. And you're welcome uh, anytime here. So we'll talk. You, we'll talk to you soon. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Nick. All right, Vince. Good night. Bye. Thanks.